Tourism and Sport, the implementation of Operation Open City all year round to tackle the year round traffic congestion in Dublin City. Thanks, Count Corley. I want to uh, thank the Minister for being present. Um, in fairness, uh, he's one of the, the few Cabinet Ministers who turns up for topicals on a very consistent basis. Um, and. Uh, I know he'll accuse me of whining and whinging if I start off in a, a particular vein, but I'm, 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 uh, uh, I have a duty as a public representative. There's nothing personal, Minister. I'd be very fond of you personally. Um, Christmas um, brings up, and it is worth rehearsing just briefly, why, why we get so exercised uh, uh, about traffic. Because it becomes a much more focused issue, much more concentrated issue at Christmas, but my topical relates to all round the year, and some specific things that, Minister, you might look at addressing. Um, Christmas time is a time where people like to be relaxed. We notice, you know, at any time of the day, the traffic in and out of the city, the traffic in and out of major shopping centres, whether it's Dundrum in your constituency or the Square in my own and Liffey Valley in Blanchardstown. There is intense uh, traffic movement and pedestrian movements into these centres as people try you know, to do their Christmas shopping, to enjoy the festive spirit. And there is nothing worse than being stuck in a car or stuck in a bus, simply not moving, aggravated by weather. So I know one of the, uh, one of the principles behind what used to be called Operation Free Flow and is now Operation Open City was that, you know, all road works or street works would be uh, curtailed during the period or carried out during uh, less busy commuting hours. And I'm going to be very parochial on this, Minister, at the entrance to my estate <coughs> on Scholarstown Road, you used to represent this area, Minister, uh, there's a roundabout. There are uh, unearthly works going on at this roundabout, and it's 200 yards from the M50, causing tailbacks. That work is ongoing. Actually, will go on until the 17th of December. So there's no operation free flow there. And I'm just wondering who can I appeal to uh, under the Operation Open City? Uh, to, to take some action there, particularly at this time of the year. But there's a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention. We'll have spoken before here in the Chamber about how much congestion is causing the city annually, about 300, 300 million at the moment, and expected to rise by 2030 to about 2 billion annually. Um, and one of the things Dublin Chamber, for example, discovered that uh, one of the uh, things that cheeses off commuters pretty frequently is, and, and deters them from using public transport, is a perception and also a reality uh, that bus journey times, for example, are uncompetitive compared to car journey times. I know, uh, because I, I travel across the degree of modes, whether it's walking, cycling or driving the car and occasionally on the bus, um, our bus lanes, Minister, are not policed adequately at all. And I think if they were, I'm just wondering if you have any plans or if the NTA has any plans or the councils have any plans for this specifically, because I know it uses up a lot of Garda resources. Its benefit would be twofold. There are a number of bus lanes uh, that just, you know, they don't operate on a 24-hour basis, but when they do kick in, uh, cars just fill up these spaces. And it's a habit that's been allowed formed because there's a lack of police uh, observation, police control over it. But if these were truly policed, then I think you'd see an awful lot more people have confidence in using a bus uh, to commute to and from town or to commute to and from particular areas. And I think that's one area that you could take a particular uh, interest in. There are other areas, again, like coming into Christmas, that we could try and facilitate a number of park and rides on the outskirts of the city, in the suburbs, using existing car parks that are there that wouldn't be used particularly during office hours. So there are just a couple of ideas, uh, Minister, and I welcome your feedback on this. Minister. Thank you, Deputy Le Hart, for all the, uh, for the constructive suggestions that he has made. And um, maybe if I could just respond. I'm, it is a little difficult. I, I know that congestion is a kind of feast which keeps on giving. It must be wonderful to be in opposition to be transport spokesman or spokesman for Dublin and say, well, what will I, I have a go at this today? You could do congestion every single day till kingdom come, and you'd find problems, and we admit that. It is not optimal. There are, there are problems in congestion, but it's, it's, it's kind of easy to tackle it from the opposition benches, 
uh, and the government is not ashamed of some very, very strong measures which is taken to relieve uh, congestion. I do find it really a little bit odd when we're doing something right uh, around Christmas that uh, the complaint then becomes, why aren't you doing it all year round? Instead of, well done, it's working in Christmas uh, at the moment. And the answer, I suppose, to that is that it is a short and sharp uh, attempt to tackle the challenge of the traffic around Christmas. It is thankfully successful, there's still congestion, but it's something which I think the Deputy acknowledges, and I'm grateful to him for that. Uh, but it is something which is a matter of guard or enforcement, I suppose, and uh, while we welcome and very much congratulate the Guardian on what they're doing, this it would be very difficult for them to do it all year round, I guess, because of resources. I don't know, because it, guard enforcement is not my portfolio. But, uh, but I imagine that it's something where they make a, an extra special effort with extra special manpower uh, on the city traffic flow, and which they tackle with some success. Um, my guess is that uh, those resources have to be deployed elsewhere, or maybe they just aren't available for the rest of the year. But I wish to congratulate them on what they have been doing around Christmas. Uh, and I would, I would share the deputy's aspiration that we could have perfection or near perfection all the time, but I just don't think we're going to get that. In terms of traffic flow and congestion in Dublin, uh, for some time to come. That doesn't mean we're not tackling it. We are very, very constructively. Operation Open City aims to help people get about their day's business, enjoy the seasonal festivities by facilitating the movement of public transport in Dublin and minimising traffic disruption to the general public through high visibility and enforcement activity. As the Deputy is aware, the operation is led each year by a Gardaí corner. However, there are a number of different agencies involved in supporting the work of Angarthashi Corner, such as the NTA, Transport Information Ireland, the Dublin Local Authorities, Transport Providers, and indeed the business community itself. However, as the Deputy is also aware, the issue of congestion in our cities, while it may become more acute over the Christmas period, is a challenge all year round. As can be seen from Operation Open City each Christmas, that challenge requires a multi-agency response. I can assure the Deputy that such an approach is being adopted in Dublin City and the wider Greater Dublin area. The NTA, Dublin City Council and TII, in conjunction with public transport operators, are progressing various measures to ensure efficient functioning of transport within the city centre. These measures can be found in the NTA's transport strategy for the Greater Dublin area, as well as the 2015 Dublin City Centre Transport Study, which was prepared by the City Council and the NTA. Not surprisingly, a key thrust of both is to significantly improve the public transport infrastructure and services, as well as the cycling and walking facilities in the city. A number of recently completed projects have already served to improve both capacity and quality of service. The opening of Lewis Cross City last year, the reopening of the Phoenix Park Tunnel for commuter trains to and from Kildare at the end of 2016, the introduction earlier this year of 10-minute DART services, investment in cycle routes and public bike sharing schemes, and the renewal and expansion of the PSO bus fleets. While just this week new timetables came into operation across the computer rail net network, which provide for extended services across the day. Across the day. Next year, we'll also see, see the PSO bus fleet in the city expand by around 70 additional buses, and the fleet has already expanded by around 17% in the last couple of years. And the Lewis Green Line capacity enhancement project will continue in 2019 Thank you, too, with the delivery of extended trams expected towards the end of the year. Thanks, Minister. <clears throat> and indeed, I mean, you did start off by saying it must be wonderful uh, mm -hmm. to be in opposition and raising traffic congestion, which is the gift that keeps on giving. So it, it doesn't give me any pleasure to do it because it's a problem uh, uh, into which we don't seem to be making any deep impact. I haven't seen a huge guard of presence on the street, but let's keep a focus on positive things. Um, did you call, would you as Minister for Transport, because if I was in your position, this is a thing that I would do maybe a month or two months before uh, the Christmas period, would you have called all those agencies in and had uh, a discussion with them and really pushed them hard uh, in terms of the measures that they could take and whether they look at international experience? But have you called them in? The second thing, because I would have thought that's a kind of a logical first step for a Minister for Transport to do, uh, to get at, here at first hand, but also maybe to offer some suggestions. And maybe abandon the script, Minister, for, for the response to this. If I could ask you about the bus lanes, because this could benefit people all year round. If they are really policed adequately, and I mean policed 
pretty adequately, the really important ones, then people will learn a habit that they can translate over the rest of the year, that they're going to be penalised if they, if they drive into a bus lane. And it's not about penalising for them for being in a bus lane. It's because of the fact that actually the bus simply can't proceed when there are cars in the bus lane. Buses get held up, they don't meet their timetables, and then the public are less inclined to take public transport. So this would be a real public transport initiative. The other thing, a small point, and I could raise multiple ones. Could you ask Lewis, the next time you meet them in Dublin bus, why do all buses have to start at terminus? And I've raised this with Dublin bus. And out in your own constituency in Dundrum and Sandyford, why at peak times, why can't they send dispatches? There's some technical reason or logistical reason. Why can't they dispatch the occasional empty tram that passes a few stops and starts at Dundrum and is able to actually absorb everybody who's on the platform in start of starting every, uh, uh, instead of starting every Lewis at, at the terminus? And similarly, Thank you very buses, much, just to finish the point, if I may, Ken Crowley, a lot of people complain in different areas that if a bus was allowed to start four or five stops in, it could actually absorb the capacity and then you wouldn't have this need for buses packed, passing by people queuing up at bus stops. They're just two or three Thank simple initiatives. Minister. Thanks, Thank Ken Yeah, um, it's difficult to answer the question without being too detailed, which is obviously not in my brief, but I would say this to you because I wouldn't decide on bus routes or individual routes or individual corridors or anything like that, and it would be absolutely wrong if I did so, because the first thing I'd do is I'd have to consider various people's constituency and I'd be accused of political favouritism. So don't get involved in that sort of detail, Deputy. But I do meet the NTA, the Lewis, Dublin bus, uh, I don't know who else you mentioned there, on a pretty regular basis. And I would express the kind of concerns which you've expressed there on a pretty regular basis. Uh, and they would be aware of that, and I, and I would refer the concerns which you've expressed, which would probably reflect my own, uh, to them from, from time to time. And I just want to say this, that I think uh, it is unfair to suggest that they're not doing an adequate job in, in uh, relieving congestion. Congestion is not going to be sorted in the short term. Uh, you're not going to wave a magic wand overnight and actually sort it out. That, that is quite obviously the case. What I have listed there, and I think I, I, should, I should mention it to you, is that the extraordinary measures that we are taking, which are part of a long-term programme, which will certainly relieve the, uh, the, the problems. Um, bus, bus transport, really, I suppose, is the main component of the solution. Sustainable transport is very important, and bus transport is the largest ingredient of that. Uh, and bus transport is something is 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 a is something into which we have invested huge sums of money in order to achieve the same objectives that you and I would like to achieve. And I don't think that you and I differ from what I see on issues like bus connect. Uh, in maybe on in detail we would, I'm sure, and we'd have we'd have differences about certain routes. But on the whole, this is a, this is a very very Concerted and expensive, but well, well spent money on getting people to more places in a shorter time, building more bus corridors to which you referred, which is very, very important because then the buses will cut the, the time of journeys, which will you, automatically and hopefully take the cars off the road. And we are, with other projects, which I'm not going to have time to list, but I would, no, we are no. tackling this in a long and a short term basis. But congestion won't be sorted overnight, but it will be relieved greatly by the great pro by the projects on which we've embarked thank you very much the fourth